This is the color I would like, please. This looks horrible. This is your sign. Tragedy struck. Time of my life. These two together? Are you kidding me? Hi guys, welcome back to the Smash Knits channel. We are up to episode number 10 now. Big one oh, we're into the double digits, which is really exciting. Um, today we've got quite a lot to get through, so I'll try not to mumble on too long. I wanted to say uh, a big welcome to all of the new subscribers here and, uh, and kind of reintroduce myself. My name's Ash, aka Smash. I am a kind of newer, confident beginner knitter based in Melbourne, Australia. And I just love, you know, everything knitting. I've been knitting for about a year and a half now. And as you can tell, I'm kind of obsessed. And if you like kind of fun, goofy <laughs> knitting content, then I'm your gal. <laughs> um, yeah, I try and upload a podcast pretty much like once every three to four weeks. And then I'm trying to kind of fit in other videos in between. So if you like that kind of stuff, stick around. Um, yeah, and then... Let's just get into it. Now, I should preface by saying that it looks a bit bright and the lighting is a bit different. That's because we are currently in daylight savings here in Victoria. So it's really dark out. <laughs> it gets dark at like 4.35 o'clock, especially with it's been so gloomy and miserable outside. So that's why I've got kind of the intense lighting on today. Um, yeah, and the reason why I have to film this at night is because on the weekend, I'm actually going away for... Um, my anniversary. So John and I have been together for seven years now. Uh, so that's pretty exciting and we don't get to go away often. So I'm kind of like pre-filming this. So why, while, uh, while you're watching this, I might be away on my anniversary weekend. So um, yeah, I'm excited about that. We're going to the Wool Museum. So I'm super excited for that. So I'm hoping to take some footage of us at the Wool Museum um, in Geelong and kind of take you guys with me. Hopefully I remember, I have a terrible habit of going away and never taking any pictures. Um, and then when I come back from, from the trip, all I have is like two pictures and an accidental screenshot. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully I remember and I get my camera out and I'm not, you know, too shy about it. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's just get into it. The first finished object that I want to show you guys today is a really exciting one. It's one that I've been wanting to cast on for a while, um, but I just never got around to it until, this might be a bit of a hint, Chloe from Woolen Works, she finally finished dyeing her Barbie collection. And if you live under a rock and you've never heard of Woolen Works, she is this amazing Australian indie dyer who dyes the most fantastic colorways. And last year in October, she released her Barbie collection, which had you know, it was inspired by the Barbie movie and it had these fantastic colors. I was lucky enough to go to the She's Crafty Market in Castle, Maine on the day that she released and pick up some in person myself. I know quite a few people have ordered and been waiting for their pre-orders, but she just finished dyeing it all now. Yeah, crazy. And um, so she's shipping it out and I saw her post on her Instagram. And I thought, oh my God, I've had this yarn sitting there. I've always known what I wanted to do with it. This is kind of kicked me into gear, lit a fire under my bum to get me going to do this. So I finally decided to cast on the Oslo hat. So this is the Oslo hat in this amazing colorway called Flat Feet. And this is inspired after Barbie's dress at the start of the movie when she has, you know, she finds out she has flat feet. It's the very start of everything. And I have been kind of eyeing off this color in my collection for quite a while because it's so beautiful and bright and blue and I'm just absolutely obsessed with it. And I knew I always wanted to make an Oslo hat. I was lucky enough to get three skeins of the fingering sock base, uh, which is a 75% um, merino, superwash merino and a 25% nylon base. I was lucky to get three skeins because it's about 400 meters in each skein. But the Oslo hat by Petite Knit, it requires uh, DK yarn, like eight ply. So I just held it double and while I knit. And I think it turned out really, really well. So I've been saving the yarn for this. And then I've also been saving it for some socks. But the annoying thing about the Oslo hat is that it uses just over 
200 meters of DK or just over 400 meters of fingering. So that's why I kind of put it, I, that's why I got three instead of just two because I wasn't too sure how much more it would take um, to make this. But to give you a quick rundown of the Oslo hat, I'm sure all of you have already seen a million of these. That's such a popular pattern, but in case you don't know, um, it's just a simple stockinette hat um, with a folded brim and you knit stockinette in the round until you get to a certain like, and then you fold it over and join it over, kind of like a folded collar. And that way when you fold it, let me just try and do this. That way when you fold it over, it's actually a triple thick brim rather than just a double thick if you went to do that um, kind of joining folded over brim look. And I really, really love it. I, this is actually the second one I've knit this month. And that's because I originally knit one for my boss at work because he's going to Germany soon. Actually, he, he'll be there very, very soon. He might be even there while I'm recording this. And before he left to go to Europe, <laughs> I didn't take a picture of it, unfortunately, so I can't show it to you. I made it in this beautiful grey uh, Peyton's Dreamtime Merino that I had left over from my Eva cardigan. And yeah, it was really lovely, but it was kind of good because it was it was a guinea pig for when I wanted to knit mine. Because I have a really bad habit of making all my beanies either too tight or too long or too short. So I've knit like four or five beanies before and I never get the sizing right. I don't know if any of you guys feel the same way. Like, do you have issues with trying to find the perfect size beanie? I do. So I knit him one and I was able to put it on my head because his head's the same size as mine and determine whether or not like I needed to modify the pattern so that it would more suit my head shape. Immediately I knew that I was going to like shorten it in the crown because it had about two inches kind of of extra space on my head when I wore it. Um, so I did that. I just knit kind of one inch less and that gave me a little bit of room so that it's not like tied on the top of my, on like the crown section, but it wasn't too um too long it looks really short in here but I just think I have like a short skull um but it looks really short but it's not that short um and then it just has really nice kind of that cross um decreases on the top I think it looks really nice I'm gonna try and put it on for you guys without completely messing up my hair but this is what it looks like <laughs> this is what it looks like on and I think it looks really cute. I think it's super bright and that's what I wanted. I, I love wearing bright colors in winter, especially when the weather is cold because I feel like it just makes everything a bit more exciting and happy. I feel like I do get kind of seasonal depression uh, when it's kind of gloomy outside. The sun definitely cheers me up. So I think seeing bright colors makes me, makes me happier and I just really love how blue this is. And if you couldn't already tell, already tell, I uh, did match my fingernail color <laughs> to my beanie. Um, I love to coordinate. I love coordinating. <laughs> so I took this, I actually took like the hank um, or the skein into the, into the salon with me, like the nail salon. And I showed it to the lady and I was like, this is the color I would like, please. <laughs> and she, she looked at me and she rolled her eyes. She's like, fine. <laughs> but I love it. I just, I love it. I think it's so cute. Um, and I think it's nice as well that I get to coordinate. So whatever I'm wearing, if I'm wearing this or whatever on the top, I've always got kind of like a matching set, a little coordination. I really, really love it. It's so cute. Anyway, I'll just keep talking about it because I want to talk about the yarn. Obviously, I mentioned before that it used just over um, 100 grams of yarn and it did. It used about 110 grams of yarn. So I've got 90 grams left. So each of these are 45 um, grams each. As I said before, I held the fingering together. I held two separate skeins together so that any kind of variation in the yarn colors or where like the dye wasn't as saturated it kind of mitigated it a bit because um 
I was holding two together. So, and I think it looked really well. Like, obviously it's a tonal, it's a really hard color to work with. I remember Chloe from Willem Oaks talking about it on her Instagram story about it, how she had such a big issue with trying to get this right. And she had lots of oopsies, she calls them. Um, but it took a lot of time to perfect. And I, you know, there is some variegation, like very, very slight, like it's a tonal, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, but I think it's great. I think it adds character to the beanie. Um, and I think even though the Oslo hat is great in terms of it looks like a commercial hat, um, a commercial beanie toque, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it does kind of still add that handmade quality kind of feel having that tiny bit of variegation. And I just love the folded brim. I think I'm a thicker brim girly, you know, I like a bit of volume. I feel like cause my hair is not voluminous at all. I like the bit of volume. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I love it. So this is definitely kind of one of my, you know, more exciting knits, I think, especially cause this yarn is just so special. I should also talk about the texture of the yarn. This yarn I have used before, but I've never used it as a beanie or anything that's near my neck or kind of close to skin other than on my feet. And it is really super soft. It's really lovely. Um, it's a gorgeous yarn to work with. Her bases are really, really good. And um, I think it got a lot of really good drape after I had blocked it. Um, the fabric really neatened up, looks really good. I'm super happy. Yeah, can't wait to make some, I'm definitely going to make some cable socks, like all blue cable socks with this. And I think it's going to look fantastic. And then just imagine, imagine if I had all blue cable socks, a blue beanie, and then I had my fingernails blue, the coordination. It's too much sometimes for other people, but I love it. I love coordinating. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite hobbies after knitting. The next finished object that I want to talk about today is a sock. <laughs> no surprise. If you haven't seen my last podcast episode, I recently picked up a copy of the Summer Lee's book, The Sock Project. Um, I have been loving this book and I am slowly knitting my way through it. Well, <laughs> not so slowly, I guess. It's not as slow as I thought I would. Uh, but I really, really love it. I kind of... Um, you know, give it a bit of a review, go through some of the content and what's uh, contained in the book in my last podcast episode. So if you're interested in this book, go check that out because um, that'll kind of give you an idea of what's in it. I really, really love it. And I definitely would recommend it because it is just very versatile and a really good uh, jumping off point if you are kind of not in a, you don't have to be, you know, I wouldn't recommend this for someone who's never knit socks before but if you are you know pretty confident beginner and you've knit a few socks I reckon this is this is great book for you whether you're experienced or not I reckon it's pretty good um so I had knit one of the kind of basic socks out of it <clears throat> and I knit that in cascade heritage in this beautiful lilac color and then I did a contrasting toe heel and cuff um in some hedgehog fibers like a mini and I was trying an afterthought heel for the first time and that was really interesting but I kind of wanted to uh, do something a bit more exciting I'm not a huge color work person I haven't really done any color work to be completely honest I think I've tried uh socks um like striped socks once before but it didn't really work out but I trust summer so I thought yep this time I'm gonna do striped socks and in the book, she teaches you how to do drugless stripes. Um, she also teaches you how to catch floats, which are both of the techniques that you need to use to make the sock recipe number two, AKA the French connection, which is this sock right here, this blue one. So this blue sock here is a basic stripe sock with a slip stitch heel, but instead of the stripes, of the main color and the contrasting color being kind of the same amount of um, rows, the contrasting color is actually a thinner stripe than the main color. And I really like that. I thought it just looked really, really chic and really beautiful. And I just kind of wanted to do it in my own colors. I love the blue that she's got here, but I thought this would be kind of a really easy jumping off point 
um, to introduce me into color work <laughs> as I'm not so experienced. So I picked these two gorgeous colors, two colors that I hadn't previously owned in my collection, but so glad I do now. So this is the Lang Jewel in the color natural. And then this is the Hedgehog Fibers uh, sock in the color Flamingo. So I picked these both up at Little Woolies. Um, I went there over the Easter break um, with my mum, which was really, really nice to kind of introduce her into what I do and what a hand dyed yarn is. She's not a knitter herself, but it was nice to go in there with her and show and shop. And I had never used the Jewel before, but I know that Summer League uses it in her book. I know she's used it for lots of her patterns. So I was really curious to see how it knit up, um, what it felt like. And they have a really great color range. The Hedgehog Fibers I've used before and it's stunning, especially this fluoro pink. Um, straight away it attracted me because it's just so bright and beautiful, you know. You can see in the background that I love bright and beautiful colors and I couldn't leave this behind. So I combined these two together to create this beautiful sock. I love it. Isn't this gorgeous? So this here is my lovely French Connection sock. And you can see that I've used the Jewel as the main color and then I've used the hedgehog fibers as the contrasting color and i think they paired perfectly together i love a really neutral grayish and that's exactly what i would describe this jewel color is i think it's called natural but it is that perfect grayish color it's not cream it's not cool too cool like a gray it's a bit like that perfect in between that is grayish then the pink obviously just contrasts so so well um, in the book, like I said before, she does help you do jugless stripes. Um, obviously, it's not invisible. You still can tell if you're looking at it that that's where you change colors. But I think it looks a lot better than if you were to just leave it and have quite a large jug. But I'll show you up close what it looks like. And I think it's pretty good. Like you can see it's right there. But I think it blends in pretty well. So yeah, that's where, it, that's where it is. She gives really valuable tips and tricks, but she doesn't hold your hand throughout the whole book, which is great because you don't want to be overwhelmed with information when it's just a basic sock pattern like this. Most of the time, because I've knit so many socks, I don't really need much instruction just in terms of like simple things like how many spaces between certain things or where to start here and the pattern, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, I think it's really, really simple sock, very easy. And I'm super satisfied with the result in her pattern. She does do a lot. Like she does pick up a lot less stitches than I do. I always tend to pick up a few more, uh, just because I do have high arches. So that gives me a little bit more area in this kind of section. Also, I tend to pick up, um, a stitch from the row below when I'm first joining the heel flap so that you get like a nice how can I show you so that you get a nice kind of hole free connection there and I think that works really well and I do that on all my socks um, the ribbing on the top is two by one which I love as well I never really do two by one but I think it's one of my favorite types of ribbing now that I've done it on this sock and I think I did it on the first sock as well when first knitting this up I wasn't totally convinced that I was going to love this sock and that's mostly because of the Lang Jewel I thought because this was going to be a you know a commercial yarn that the spin consistency would be very even over the entire thing but surprisingly it kind of changes from really thin to kind of medium thickness throughout even though it doesn't look like that it does and what that created was really rough and really uneven looking stitch definition when i was first knitting it up and i'm able to show you this because i've actually got the non-blocked version of my other sock so that you can see 
and you can kind of see how messy that looks. I don't know if it's showing it super well on camera, but it is really messy. It's nowhere near as neat and clean. I was really disappointed when I was first knitting this up, not in the colors that I had chosen, but just in the Langer wall because it looked so messy and it looked like I was rowing out, even though I, you know, I knit with nine inch circular needles. I was even knitting with a smaller needle size than I usually use. I usually use a 2.25 no, sorry, 2.5, but I sized down to a 2.25 so that I could get like a tighter gauge and a nicer stitch definition. But yeah, it just like looks horrible versus the, um, versus the hedgehog fibers because it's a bit more plump. I found that that looked really neat, but the Jawal just looked crazy, looked so messy. But luckily after blocking, it's so different. Like the blocking just completely smoothed out any unevenness. It looks like you wouldn't believe that that was the same. That was the same sock. Like I'll hold them up next to each other so you can get a better idea. And this also kind of proves my own opinion because I'm very much pro blocking. Um, this kind of shows you how much of a difference blocking truly makes. Like if you have a look at those two socks together and you can really see how messy and how like just yeah how weird this one looks versus the other one that's blocked it's crazy how much just something is put soaking it in water and then leaving it to dry makes such a difference like and on the back where you've got the jugless rounds um again you can see it just looks so much nicer yeah, so if you aren't convinced to block your socks already, this is your sign. Please block your socks. It makes such a difference. Like the texture, the feel, like this feels kind of rough. This is lovely and soft. This is so drapey. This is like stiff. <laughs> and even just when it, how it feels on the foot makes such a difference. Like, look at that. Look at the drape. Like, am I waving this too much? You can see like how beautiful and drapey this one is compared to this one. So I just wanted to kind of show you an example of how different they look when they're blocked versus not. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's a sock. It's going on my foot. It doesn't really matter. It matters. Nothing is more satisfying than a crisp sock. I should also talk about a bit more into the yarns. This one here, I don't know if I mentioned, is 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon, whereas the Jawal is 75% um, <clears throat> superwash merino and 25% uh, nylon. So in terms of their merino to nylon content, they are very different. Obviously, the superwash um, higher content in the hedgehog fibers makes it a lot softer. This does, I feel like if I'm not too sensitive to it, but I know that people mention that sometimes you can feel the nylon in the yarn part like Post blocking, you can't feel it, but pre blocking, it definitely feels like not rough, but not as silky soft as something like the hedgehog fibers, for example. The first whip I have to show you today is the Stick Season sweater by Rebecca Klo or the Crea Bayer. This I am knitting in Al of Athena Athens DK in the color Gentleman's Moss, which is a 100% merino, uh, superwash merino base. It's absolutely beautiful. It's in this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous color, this lovely green, um, and it's super soft. It's DK weight. So this pattern is um, designed for DK weight yarn, and it's got um, kind of like a drop shoulder kind of construction where you knit the back, then you pick up for the shoulders, knit the shoulders, connect in the front, uh, and then you knit down until you connect under the arms. And it's got this beautiful textured yoke. I really, really love it. This is just more of an update because I haven't really got a lot to show you, but I have, oh, if you can see that, Ugh. I have finished the ribbing on the bottom front. I was just doing the ribbing on the back when tragedy struck. <laughs> Unfortunately, one day when I was you know, knitting on the couch as you do, just relaxing. I decided to get off the couch. I pushed off the couch, not knowing that 
my interchangeable needle tip was sandwiched between my phone and the couch and all of a sudden I heard this snap and my beautiful lantern moon <laughs> interchangeable needle tip had completely snapped. So devastated, so sad. So unfortunately that kind of hindered any more progress that I was going to make on the back ribbing. So I'm kind of at a stand still at the moment of the back. Um, but the ribbing is just two by two ribbing. In the pattern, it doesn't call for a split um, hem, but I did it anyway because I, I like that look. <sighs> but it was just super devastating because I had put this down for a while. I had been focusing on socks because I was so excited about the Summer Lee book. I had been doing, you know, my two Oslo hats uh, and you'll see my other whips as well that I just hadn't really been picking this up. So when I did eventually get around to picking this back up and then break my interchangeable needle in the same night, I was just so over it by that point, especially because I'm kind of losing motivation, which is sucks because I love this color. I love the yarn and I love the design of the sweater. So I'm just trying to like stick it out. So instead of just giving up and, you know, cause I had to wait cause I had to order another, um, interchangeable needle tip. Um, I ended up doing one of this. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, I had to, I ended up doing one of the sleeves. So I'm currently up to the two by two ribbing on the end here and I'm just doing those on DPNs. The body is knit in 3.5 millimeter needles whereas the like ribbing is in 3.25. So I'm just using 3.25 bamboo needles. I think these are the Chulip ones. I really like all the Chulip bamboo products. They're really smooth um, and I've never broken them. So, so that's good. But yeah, just a really basic sleeve. I wouldn't say it's an oversized sleeve. I think the tape is really kind of steady and I expect that this isn't going to be too loose either. My Eva cardigan, the sleeve ends up being really wide, but I don't think this is going to be too wide. I have tried it on. I tried it on before I started the ribbing and I also tried it on after I finished the front ribbing. And I don't know, at the time I didn't feel like it was too short. That or I thought that I would get a lot more length because the super wash after blocking would stretch but I tried it on the other day and I have to say it is very cropped it is super cropped so I'm kind of toying with the idea to rip back the ribbing <laughs> and add a few more inches onto the body because I'm just worried that the super wash is not going to stretch out as much as I want I really want to make this jumper like a casual jumper that I can just throw on and I'm comfortable with and I'm kind of worried that if I leave it at this length, and I'll try and insert some B-roll for you so that you can see that I'm just not going to wear it as much as I should. And I feel like that would be a shame because this is my first ever sweater with hand dyed, like indie dyed yarn. So it is super special and it is more of an expensive exercise. So I feel like if I want to wear this more, maybe I should lengthen it because it would be a waste if I didn't and it didn't stretch out as much and then I wasn't wearing it for it to just sit there when it's such beautiful yarn and I put all this effort into it and it's you know it's going to be a really lovely pattern so I think I might end up ripping back all of this ribbing you know picking up right before I split and knitting some uh you know oh god sorry <laughs> That's like, it's not the needles, it's the, like the, the interchangeable needle ends are like wood and they keep like banging on my stand. So, sorry. Um, yeah, you can even see now when I'm holding it up, the torso does look really short, but I knitted exactly to the measurements in the pattern. But looking at it now, I'm like, yeah, that is, that is very short. So I think I actually am gonna rip it back and I, oh, it's so annoying because it's like you put so much effort into it, but it's kind of that sunken cost fallacy where I think I've put so much time into it that I, re you know, I don't want to rip it back. But at the end of the day, if it's going to be something that's going to impact the regularity that I'm going to wear it, then I might as well just rip it back and fix it and make it how I want. Because it's not even a question of like, do I have enough yarn? I definitely have enough yarn. I have at least three skeins left. And I think it took me about, you know, just over 
oh, I haven't even finished the ribbing yet, but I think it takes about a skein to do one of the sleeves. So I definitely will have enough to do, like to add more onto the body. I just hate ripping back. It's just something that I just don't want to do. <laughs> so yeah, I'm toying with it in my head, but I think this has kind of helped me make the decision that yes, I'm going to rip it back and add some more length to it. Do you guys, what do you guys think? Should I rip it back? Or should I just leave it and trust that the superwash is going to stretch out? Because I think I'd rather it be oversized than undersized. I am also a bit concerned that I made it a bit too small, that my gauge is maybe a bit tight, which never happens to me because when I did try it on, it feels very tight kind of underneath the underarm. I'm hoping it stretches out, but I have heard, you know, that Rebecca Chloe makes it so it's a bit tight. So I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that as well, but it's not too bad. I think it's, I think it'll be fine. That's one of the things that I'm trusting to actually uh, stretch out because I really don't want to rip back all the way to here, do more increases. I, I, if you have watched my previous video, I've already had to rip back some of some of the chest part because I did the increases wrong. So I don't want to rip out more. Mm. And thinking about it as well, I haven't even got the collar on here. So as soon as I hit that, like hit that collar point and do the collar, it's going to bring this in even more, which will shorten it even more. So yeah, I think I've made up my mind. I think I'm going to definitely rip it back <laughs> as much as I don't want to. I think it's going to have to be done, but yes. That's where I'm at with that. Okay, another whip. Here we go. It is another sock. <laughs> Don't hate me. Uh, yes, it is from The Sock Project by Summer Lee. Uh, what can I say? I bought the book. I'm going to use it. It is what it is. So this was a pattern that I straight away uh, just convinced me to buy the book because I loved how it looked. I love the effect. It was something unique. Um, it was stripy, but a little bit different. And that is this pattern right here. So this is called the Trompe Le Monde socks. And it's this gorgeous stripe textured sock with these slip stitches. And it makes it so interesting to look at because it's not just a classic stripe. It kind of gives the illusion of color work without having to do color work if that makes sense you're only ever using one color at a time you're not having to you know work with two strands so it makes it super super easy and I love patterns that look complex but are really easy those are my favorite <laughs> so I decided to do it in these two yarns so this is the Rosarius for Marion no sorry the Rosarius for Maya in the color 26 red and 14 light blue. I picked these up from Lumen Spindle. She has a great range of all of these colors. And these are a 70% uh, merino wool and 30% nylon base. And these are super squishy and really lovely and soft. I feel like these are a bit more plump than the Lang Jawol. I feel like they have a bit more body uh, to the strand. And I really like that because I feel like my stitch definition, even pre blocking looks really good. And I really love this color combination together because this is a light blue, but it's kind of got slight, like cool pebble undertones. And then this is kind of just like a very true red. And I think they look fantastic together. So I liked some of these combination of the red and the pink, but I didn't want to just copy her. Uh, so I decided to go with the blue and here it is. Isn't it so cute? I just think the slip stitch pattern is so oh, just a thrill. As soon as I cast this on and got past the ribbing and even just did a couple of rows of this kind of textured stripe pattern, I was having a ball. Like I was literally elated. I was having the time of my life knitting these, which is kind of embarrassing, but I really was. I remember John was sitting on the couch and he was studying and I was just going like, oh, 
oh, that's good. That looks so good. And I'm just like, oh, you know, when you don't really make much progress because you're just stopping and looking at your knitting every single time you do a row and you're just like admiring it. You're like, that is good. That's really nice. That's what I was doing with this. So it took me a long time just to do one sock because I just kept stopping midway and just admiring it because it looks so good. You know, not to toot my own horn, but I think any color combination with a high contrast in this sock design would be fantastic. And blue and red are, I think, a really kind of interesting colorway um, because I don't really see it that often paired together. I always kind of see, um, you know, reds and pinks or blues and greens or whites and stuff like that. I don't really see like reds and blues together. And I just love how it looks, especially because I don't really knit a lot of red garments. I don't really knit with a lot of red at all. I really like red, but I just, it's something that I don't really gravitate towards when I'm in the store. So I thought, you know, change it up and make something with red in it. And I just love them. The slip stitch pattern looks really fantastic. It's really effective. The stitch definition looks really nice. It's just got a normal slip stitch heel and then you've got the two by one ribbing at the top. Now I really love the yarn. I really love the pattern and like I talked about before when I was knitting my my other sh sh socks, the striped socks, god that was hard to get out, um, the French Connection socks. I went down a needle size than my usual needle size. So usually I'm a 2.5, went to a 2.25. Did the same thing with this, but step like but kept the normal cast on mm, stitch amount that I usually use. I definitely should have either gone up a needle size or gone up in the foot size because I didn't account for the fact that the slip stitches allow for pretty much no stretch uh, in the sock at all. So you can see like how stretchy that is versus this is just like no stretch at all. So when I tried to put this on my foot, I tell you now, I was I was like one of those Cinderella's evil twin sisters, oh, not evil twin sisters, I was like Cinderella's evil sister, like stepsister, trying to get this on my foot, just trying to like force my foot in there. And I managed to get my foot in there. However, it did completely distort the pattern and it looked really funky. So I'm very sad to say that this sock doesn't fit me. <laughs> after all that effort and after all that kind of like glee of knitting it, it doesn't even fit my foot. <laughs> I even... Like I even was in denial enough to cast on a second one thinking that, yeah, it'll be fine. No, no, it won't be. <laughs> so I ended up buying more of the yarn so that I could knit myself um, a new pair that actually fits me. So I'm still going to knit in the same color. I'm still going to knit the same pattern. I'm just going to go up um, on the stitch count in the book because there's multiple sizes and knit those and this will just be a pretty decoration sock that I will have laid or draped somewhere near my yarn collection or near my finished objects or something because it is just a fantastic piece and you know I had a few people be like oh I'll, I'll have it I'll have it like you can knit me a pair of socks but that would mean I'd have to knit another one and I don't want to do that so I'm already gonna have to knit three in the end so I'd rather just knit three rather than four but I yes yeah, so this is kind of like a fail in a way because it's too small for my foot but I think it's just really fantastic and hopefully in you know next podcast I can show you a finished one like a set that I can actually wear. But I really, really, really want to actually knit a sock with this pattern, but do it all in one color and see how the texture of the slip stitches looks as well. I think that would be divine. And I also want to try, like, it would be really cool if there was like a pattern out there um, that had that same kind of design. I think it's so cool, so unique, so easy. So I'd be really interested to see what this sock looks like monochrome in just one single color. I think it would look really cool. So I was thinking of doing it in that grayish color, but we'll see. I really, really like it. 
Okay, so I've got a, another project to show you. This is not a sock, <laughs> I promise. This is actually my uh, Storm Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. You would have seen it in my last podcast episode. I haven't made too much progress, but a bit of progress on the body. But this is what I've got so far. So I think last time I was around about here somewhere. And so now we are almost to the bottom ribbing. We're just doing kind of like a broken ribbing at the bottom. And I have been really, really loving this. It's really cute. I put it down for a while. Like I said, I've been focusing on the socks. But I really want to get this finished because this is for my friend's son. And he is little. And I know little... Little kids grow quick, so I want to get this out before uh, before he outgrows it. It is an oversized sweater, so I'm hoping it's going to be big on him. Um, but it's really, really gorgeous. I'm knitting this in the Rosarius 4 Benjamin, which is this yarn here. This, sorry, like hair isn't everything. Uh, this is an acrylic yarn, and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty sure it is... Yeah, like 50% microfiber acrylic and then 50% poly polyamide. So I don't know, but it's super soft. Like when I tell you this is so soft, this is one of those yarns where you look at it and you think it's going to be soft, but you don't, you get like a shock when you feel it and you're like, holy moly, that's baby soft. And I think it is designed to be like a baby yarn, hence the softness, but it's gorgeous. And I love this color. I've actually knit with this yarn before I knit my... Um, oh, what's it called? My anchor tee in it in like an anthracite gray color. And that was really nice. I've knit a previous baby jumper in it um, in the pink color. And now I'm knitting this beautiful kind of cornflower blue color for the sweater. And it's pretty generous, actually. You get 250 meters of DK weight yarn in a ball. And it's pretty reasonably priced. I picked this up from Lumen Spindle and... It's just a go-to for me when it comes to anything baby related or if I'm going to be knitting anything in acrylic that's going to be like touching skin. This is what this is what I use because it's so, so, so soft. And I think it does a really good job of picking up the definition. I was a little worried at first, uh, but I think it does does a really good job. I'm really loving this kind of lattice texture in the middle. And then I love the kind of little I don't know how to describe it but whatever this texture is <laughs> I really like that too so all I have to do is a bit of ribbing on the bottom the collar and the sleeves the sleeves and the collar I don't think will take very long because it will be just such a small circumference um yeah the kind of bulkiness is done with but I'm really enjoying the pattern it's petite knit so you know it's written well it's very straightforward Everything is charted. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with charts, um, I know that can seem a little bit intimidating. However, because it's just knits and pearls, it's very easy to read. There's no deciphering it with like cables or increases or anything like that. It's it's pretty straightforward because it is for a, a child. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's quite a boxy fit. There's not really any shaping involved. And the construction is very much like a lot of the other patterns that I've been working on. Uh, very similar to the Eva Cardigan as well as the Stick Season sweater. They both start with you knit the back panel, pick up, knit the shoulders, and then you connect in the front, knit the front panel until you get to the length of where the arms are, connect, and then you start the body in the round. So it's flat for pretty much all of the yoke, like the Stick Season, like the Eva Cardigan. Um, and I really like that construction, to be honest. I know some people who knit Continental don't really like knitting flat for some of it because their gauge changes dramatically from when they knit flat from when they knit in the round. But because I uh, knit English style, I just feel like I don't really row out too much. Um, it's pretty consistent either way. So I'm very happy with it. Excited to get it off my needles. <laughs> Excited for it to be done. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm back. My uh, camera storage got full, so I had to delete a few things off there so we could keep going. But perfect timing because we are now getting into the acquisitions. So I've got a few things to show you <laughs> guiltily. 
I really this year thought I could convince myself to do a no like by year and just use my stash but that is that is not working that's not working out I got lots of yarn for my birthday and I still couldn't stop myself from buying more so I've got a few things to show you you'll notice the theme I'm sure <laughs> But um, let's start off with something I've kind of already talked about. So I talked about the Jewel before, but I also got a few other colors while I was there. I got this beautiful color here, which is this lovely kind of cool toned purple color. It's really lovely. Um, it just reminds me, I don't know, of Daphne from Scooby-Doo. It reminds me of, um, what are they, like Monsters, Inc.? <laughs> What's that guy called the bad guy in it? Just gives me those vibes and I really, really love it. I really love purple and I feel like I don't have a lot of it in my collection, especially not a cool tone purple. And then I also picked up this, which is another Jawal and it's this gorgeous kind of warm pink. It's not a peach, not a cool pink either. It's more of a rose. It's called melon and I think that is like kind of the perfect color for it is melon. So I got those two, which are really gorgeous. And I want to make a, you know, all over purple sock with this one. But this one I'm kind of planning to use in color work. And you'll see what I'm talking about soon. I picked up some Spun Right Round. And I think this has become my favorite color ever. And that's a lot. I used to think my favorite color was orange. Uh, but, or pink. But no, this is definitely my new favorite color. This is spun right round in the color Mantis. And this is just the most beautiful, beautiful color. To describe this color, I would describe it as a mustard and a chartreuse had a baby and they made Mantis. I can't tell you how obsessed I am with this color. It's just everything that I want in a grello. It's a green yellow, it's beautiful, it's vibrant but it's also a neutral and I know that sounds crazy I know it doesn't sound like it would be a neutral but it is trust me and I'll show you in a second how it can be a neutral but it's so so beautiful this is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon and I absolutely love spun right round I think in terms of non-Aussie dyers these are probably my favorite in terms of the colorways they really speak to me and this spoke to me like nothing has spoken to me ever before it's so so gorgeous I bought <laughs> too much of this because I am terrified that they are not going to get it back in stock because I would die if I didn't have this color in my life ever again so what I'm talking about in terms of it's a neutral is that you can literally pair this with anything and it looks great so I'll show you for example I'll hold up that Langewell that I had before in the color watermelon and look look how fantastic those two work together they look so good. I think they perfectly work together because this is kind of a little bit warm and this is warm and they create this lovely, very watermelon-y effect. It's a great contrast, but it's not too jarring where you're like, ugh. Another one is this gorgeous purple. I think this is giving like a really good vibe. It's definitely giving me, um, you know, Daphne from Scooby-Doo. It's giving, you know, purple and green purple and grello looks so good and i even though this is cool tone so like this is very warm tone this is very cool tone it still mixes with the warm because i don't know what it is about it but it just has this kind of ability to be a neutral even though it's so bright so i think that looks fantastic together i think this looks fantastic together and even you know the classic natural color looks fantastic as well i think they will pair really well together and then oh you're gonna die but these two together, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? Oh my God, they are just stunning together. So when I first saw these together, my first thought kind of brought me back to like the nostalgic part of my childhood where um, in Nanny McPhee, which is a kid's movie, shout out if you've ever seen it, uh, the evil kind of stepmother that's getting married to the dad. She has this really horrible, gaudy wedding um, where everything is pink and like chartreuse green themed. She has like little lamps. 
<laughs> which is kind of fitting for what I'm talking about now. She has little lambs, like her cake is pink and green, her dress is pink and green, all of the kids' um, clothing is pink and green. Everything is this horrendous pink and green combo, which is designed to make the viewer just like cringe and disgust. But as a child, I thought this was the best thing I'd ever seen in my entire life and this is what I wanted for my wedding this is what I wanted in life and this just gives me those same vibes that are in that wedding and I just love it I just love it so much this is like oh, gonna be one of my all-time favorite color combinations because <laughs> I love it so much I'm obsessed with this color and then to just go further into my spun right round obsession, I found this gorgeous color, which is called a wink and a nod. It's in the sock, in the tough sock base, just like the other one as well. And this is kind of got that gorgeous, it's like a duck, like a light, I don't know, duck egg, I don't know, with these brown and greeny yellow speckles throughout it. And I actually picked this out um, and kind of looked at it a few weeks before buying it and I couldn't get it out of my head and I kept looking at it online and I just thought it was so beautiful and then when I saw this I was like oh but this is really beautiful too and then when I put them together you can see that the kind of greeny um, yellowy little speckles in the wink and the nod match really well with the greeny yellow grello of the mantis so i really want to do a contrasting toe heel and cuff with the mantis and have this as the main and either do some sort of something textural or something cable-y um or something lacy with this because i think it'll look really really lovely i'm really into the kind of speckled yarn really light variegation not so much heavy variegation as much i feel like um, every time I start something with heavy variegation, I never really like it. So I'm super excited to do something with these two paired together. And I know we're not finished yet. Don't judge me. I, I promise I'm going to be using from Stash. I promise. This one is a Hedgehog Fibers sock yarn in the color Phoenix. And again, it's the same as their normal sock base, 90% merino and 10% nylon. And this is a color that I wouldn't usually pick out for myself. And that's because I didn't pick it. My mum picked it. So this I'm planning to make some socks for my mum. Some long ribbed socks is what she said she wants. So that's what she's gonna get. And even though it's a color that I wouldn't usually pick, I still think it's really interesting. I'm really curious to see how it knits up because it's got, I thought it was gonna be a lot more black and a lot more kind of red but it actually kind of steers more towards burgundy and then you've got these really beautiful kind of fluoro yellows really subtle and fluoro um oranges in there i'm not really someone who's attracted to black variegated yarn like any bits of black or anything like this but i'm interested to see how it works up um because it is something that i would usually never pick uh, for myself so who knows after knitting these socks i might really like it and maybe i'll you know, go more into the heavy dark colors uh, in the future. So that's just one of the ones that I got there. And then lastly, I've got these two. So this is the Midlands Merino Clackheaton and the um, Amano Yarns Uma. And these are in these kind of lovely, neutrally browny, like cool tone brown. So this is kind of a very cool tone brown. It's almost got like that hint of petroleum in it and this is just very much like a grayish a, a beige gray looks kind of more beige on camera but it is got a kind of slight brownie undertone and although I wouldn't pick this up for myself separately I think these two work together looks really nice I knit up a swatch that I couldn't find but they do look really nice because this kind of gives a variegation and the halo is so thick that it kind of neutralizes the petroleumness of the Midlands Merino in this color. The Midlands Merino is 100% superwash merino, and then the Uma is a combination of baby surrey, super kid mohair, and mulberry silk. So super soft, but not super scratchy. I've used it for a lot of things. I've actually used it in this um, sweater I've got on now, which is the, what's it called? <laughs> 
I can't remember what it's called. It's like blanking in my mind, but I'll have it linked down below anyway. Um, yes, so it's super soft and I'm planning on making a Sophie shawl. I have a Sophie shawl that I've made out of Woolen Works neon lights and it's lovely and bright and I, I love it. Wear it all the time. It's perfect, but I want to make something that's a bit more neutral, a bit more wearable and a bit more professional because I feel like sometimes when I wear it to work, it does look a little bit unprofessional. So I thought these two would be really nice and kind of chic and just really a great, you can wear it with anything sort of color. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to use with these. Lastly, I have some project bags to show you. Um, just very quickly, I'll get these through the way. So I bought these two recently at uh, Linen House, at the Linen House outlet actually in Hastings. And they're just like a homewares brand. They uh, stock pillows and Manchester and stuff like that. And I just saw these in the discounted area and they were $22 each down from like 44 or something. And I thought they were perfect size project bags, like they're perfect medium size project bag. They've got this lovely kind of quilted pattern on them. And then they have these gorgeous little tassels. So cute. And then they have a really good zip and they're lined on the inside as well. So for $22, I think that's pretty good. And they're perfect for holding socks in or for, oh, I've got yarn in there. Um, they're perfect for holding socks or scarves or shawls or medium sized projects. Yeah, I think it was a real bargain because they feel really kind of luxurious, but without breaking the bank. So if you happen to find these or like find a linen house outlet or find them online on Myers or something like that, I would definitely recommend picking one up because they're really good and the zip is really good. It feels really quality and I really like the kind of quilted nature of them especially because I love the tassels and the golden zips they um you have tassel stitch markers with your lantern moon interchangeable needles and these kind of match it so I kind of like that this all ties into my lantern moon stuff uh this is the last very thing that I got this is the Lumen Spindle project bag. It's just a beautiful drawstring bag in this lovely native Australian pattern. She, Andrea, makes all of her project bags in kind of Australian themed patterns. They have like waddles or native Australian birds and they're really lovely. Again, just a great kind of like perfect medium sized bag. I really love it. You can never have enough project bags. Alrighty, so that pretty much wraps everything up. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give this video a like. And if you want to see more of this content, feel free to subscribe. Um, I love interacting with you guys. So please leave comments down below of what's going on in your knitting life. And if you, you know, had any interest in any of the things that I talked about today it literally is the best part of making these videos is just being able to interact with you guys. Uh, it means a lot to me and that kind of leads me into something else in regards to another knitting podcaster on here, Sarah from Sarah Hand Makes. She is so fantastic. I love all of her videos. Um, she's super creative and always has just like really unique video ideas that I don't see anyone else doing. And she shouted me out in one of her last podcast episodes, uh, which was really, really nice of her because I feel like we have interacted online. We very much admire each other's style, even though it's not our own. And I think that being able to grow this relationship with other knitters online is like the whole reason why I made this podcast. I wanted to be part of this community and I feel like she really has made me feel welcome as a more experienced knitter um, and me being a beginner knitter. So I just wanted to give her a big thank you and, you know, I'll link her information down below. I'm sure you've already heard of her. <laughs> But um, yeah, like, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been a ball and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.